Technical Sergeant Sater Sandy Sanchez was an aerial gunner on B-17s during World War II. He began his combat career with the 8th Air Force, 95th Bomb Group, 334th Bomb Squadron in the fall of 1943. After having flown the required 25 combat missions with the 95th Bomb Group, Sanchez volunteered to stay on, eventually flying a total of 44 combat missions. In the summer of 1944, he was sent home for rest and reassignment as a gunnery instructor. In recognition of his dedication, a B-17 was nicknamed Smilin' Sandy Sanchez in his honor. It is the only known B-17 aircraft ever named after an enlisted man. After a short stay in the United States, the 23-year-old volunteered for what would be his third combat tour. This time, he was sent to the 15th Air Force in Italy and was assigned to the 353rd Bomb Squadron, 301st Bomb Group. On March 15, 1945, Technical Sergeant Sanchez volunteered for a mission to bomb an oil plant at Ruland, Germany, manning the top gun turret position. It would become the 66th and last mission for Sanchez. During the bomb run, the aircraft was hit by flak and severely damaged. All the crew members bailed out and were taken prisoner, except for Sanchez. It is often assumed that he did not get out of the aircraft. The B-17 eventually exploded and crashed. Sanchez's body was never recovered. Six weeks later, the war in Europe came to an end. Where is Ruland, Germany? Where is it? It's, it's about 60 miles south of Berlin. Okay. And it was an oil target. And we hit it several times. And uh, it was a long way back to base. Uh, now, Sandy had come back to our squadron. He was already had a, a lot of... Uh, uh, he pulled a dead pilot out of a B-17 one time. This is one of his awards and uh, helped a wounded co-pilot land the ship, and I think he got the Silver Star for that, which is a real high. Mm -hmm. He got the DFC, a Distinguished Flying Cross. He shot down six enemy aircraft. He was the most highly decorated enlisted man in World War II, in all, aerial man, in, in all probability. I didn't know him. Uh, I only knew the guys real close to me in my tent. So what happened was, uh, I got a good view, and, and after, uh, just before, their, t their, tank, their plane hit, as I remember, had a, a direct hit, and the plane was on fire, but fortunately the pilot was able to hold it in position so that everybody could bail out. He could look back and see before he abandoned the ship himself. Did you see this yourself? No, I'll tell you. What okay. I saw was after all that happened, the, sh the ship was on fire. It went down and exploded, but I saw three parachutes come out. So you, you were an eyewitness to the plane exploding? Yes, and I saw three parachutes come out. And my, uh, this guy in here mentions this, something similar to yeah. that. And one was on fire. Now, I don't know who that is. I mean, you see a lot of stuff. And uh, uh, so, and I, and I kept a journal. When we landed, the officers went to a briefing to be debriefed. The enlisted men on my crew never were debriefed, and we had more stories in our journals. Every one of my guys kept a journal, and on my journal that day that Sandy was killed, I've got a little note here that uh, I wrote a little story in my journals about this, the plane, the number, the mission, uh, what I saw. Uh, a plane went down, exploded, uh, three parachutes, one was on fire, poor guy, I've got that here in, in writing somewhere. When we would land, the officer would go to debriefing. We would go to the Red Cross truck and get a donut and, and some coffee and maybe a hug from a Red Cross girl, <laughs> and, then, and then go back to our tents. Mm -hmm. And we would go and we would jabber about what we saw, and, and some of the things. And then we'd sit down, and I kept a journal. Every one of my enlisted men had a journal, and I got copies of those after the war. Mm -hmm. And because I went ahead my reunion, I told them to bring them. And some of them were in more detail than others, see. My Paul Turk guy wrote this, this book. This, this book. Now, why do you think that it's possi possibly Sanchez that was in the, the burning parachute? 
Oh, I didn't know this until until later. You're, you're figuring this out based All on later information. All I know is one guy got killed that day. Yeah, it's in the record, yeah. and, and I saw it happening. My crew did. Yeah, and, and it happened to be the Sandy Sanchez that, and we we found out after we knew more, found out more about what we did after the war. Yeah, that in in it's in our journals, it's in our memories, it's in our. So it was some distance away, you know. You just saw it, and you could see that there was smoke from it, and and. Uh, Things like that were happening all the time, but this was pretty. This was the only aircraft on that mission that, as I recall, it that happened to. And uh, and because there's only one guy killed that day, in mm -hmm. uh, from that aircraft that he came, but he was one heck of a guy. And I found that out after the war, and I didn't know. I'm starting to read about my missions. Yeah. Who knows what he was like when that was happening? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's an outside chance. You don't know what's going on. There's an outside chance that he there might have been another one. That chute went out and the guy, you know, but uh, he had to use a parachute. To, to Did you guys have two parachutes or one? One. Chest oh. packs. Okay. Yeah. The pilots, uh, they did too. Some of them wore backpacks, but they were sitting against the steel, yeah. and, and, you know, for protection in their seat. And they would take their parachutes, a lot of them, and they would put it down underneath in the back mm -hmm. because it was too cumbersome for them to. Would they have two parachutes or no. just one? No, okay. no one ever had. So two. everybody had one parachute. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes, if some shrapnel, there was some spare shoots mm -hmm. because uh, if you've got shrapnel in your parachute, you could take a spare one, see, and, mm -hmm. and uh, rather than go on out and see a bunch of old. According to the Together We Served website, after the crew bailed out, the crew members were quickly rounded up by German soldiers in the area. A German officer showed them a wallet, ID tags, and personal items belonging to Sanchez, then told them his men had buried an airman near the wreckage. Sanchez's body was never recovered. Vince Parker and Sergeant Ogle, his ball turret gunner, can only describe what they saw and what they recorded. According to Vince Parker's diary entry of March 15, 1945, he was on a B-17 with uh, serial numbers 357 on the Clancy crew. He wrote, Today I was in on the longest haul that the 15th Army Air Force has ever pulled. We went to Ruland. It's 65 miles south of Berlin. We were briefed for two to three hundred fighters, so we had an escort of 200 P-51s. Over target at 2 o'clock, saw bombs hit, and large fires. A ship exploded and three chutes opened. One was on fire. Poor fellow. We had inaccurate flak. Saw first alt blowing up. Pass danger line for fighters. So P-51s head for Russia and help Russians. Take off 925, landed 520. In 1997, Clayton E. Ogle, spelled O-G-L-E, of Helena, Montana, prepared a manuscript called Clancy's Crew. According to Sergeant Ogle's manuscript, near the target, a flak burst hit a B-17. We saw three chutes come out of the plane before it rolled over and fell straight down into a spin. Fire streamed from the right wing just before it exploded.